Hello and welcome to another CodePro tutorial. In today's tutorial, we are going to be learning all about segways. We are going to learn how to create segways in Interface Builder, both for modal segways and for navigation controller segways. And then we are going to transition and understand how to do all of what we did in Interface Builder programmatically. So to begin, let's jump into Xcode and get started. Open up Xcode and create a new single view iOS application. And let's start structuring our uh, storyboard for our different types of segues. So let's start off with a push segue from a navigation controller. And let's start off by adding uh, another view controller to the storyboard. And let's also embed our first view controller inside of a navigation controller. So select your first view controller, go to the editor, and do the embed in navigation controller. So that'll get us set up here. And what we'll do next is take a button and drag that over onto our first view controller here. And uh, I'm just going to try and center mine horizontally in the uh, center here. Just do a uh, horizontal vertical center constraints. Get that there. And uh, we'll just change that text from button to segue. And <clears throat> what we'll do is we're going to go from this view controller to this view controller, all in the storyboard, not doing anything in code. And what that's going to look like here is I'm going to just change the view color of the second view controller just to something different so we can see the transition occur. And if we hold down the control key, while we, while we select the button, and we click and drag with the control key held down over to our next view controller, we'll be granted with the options of choosing a segue. Um, so in this case, uh, I'm going to be doing the show type, and that's going to create the uh, connection in the storyboard here. And you'll see here that we actually have a storyboard segue. Uh, there's an identifier that we can set up here if we want to, as far as a few other properties. Let's go ahead and run this in the simulator real quick and uh, see what it looks like. So here's my simulator running. Um, I hit my segue button, and I go right over to the detail view controller that I set. You'll notice my back button is enabled here. I have a navigation bar, and I can get back and forth just by hitting segue forward and then the back button to go back. But what if we wanted to do a uh, modal segue instead of a push segue with a navigation controller? Well, from storyboard, that's pretty easy. Uh, once we have created the segue here, or the connection, if we go over to the kind, we can change the kind from show to present modally. And you'll see that when we did that, we just lost the navigation bar uh, because this is going to modally present coming up from the bottom. So let's run that in the simulator real fast and see what that looks like uh, compared to the navigation controller. So here we go, uh, my segue button. And you'll see that it comes up from the bottom Unfortunately, we have no way to get out of this. We lost our navigation bar, we don't have a back button, so we're kind of stuck until we do something about it. And the easiest way to do something about that problem is we'll add a button to this secondary view controller here. And what we'll need to do is uh, create a subclass for this view controller, because uh, right now it doesn't really belong to any class, it's just UI view controller. So let's go over here to the uh, file explorer and we'll create a new Swift file. And we'll just call this um, destination view controller. Okay, click create. <clears throat> uh, we'll go ahead and import UI kit, which contains all of our view controller code. And we'll do class uh, destination view controller of type UI view controller. Override view did load. And we're almost set up here. What we need to do is create the IV action uh, to actually uh, hook up the button click. So open the assistant editor, go back to the main storyboard. And uh, what we'll do here is select our, our button. But before we do that, we actually we need, to, we need to associate this destination view controller with this view controller. In the storyboard. So select your view controller here, go to the class inspector under the class, 
see where it says UI view controller, we're going to link it to the destination view controller. And uh, we'll just go ahead and reuse that same name for the storyboard ID uh, and the restoration ID, even though we're not going to use that for this tutorial, but it's always good to keep them the same. Um, so <clears throat> for our button here, uh, let's change the title of it from button to dismiss. So have the button selected, go to the attribute inspector, and we'll just change this text from button to dismiss. And then we'll, uh, we'll just space it out a little bit here. Now we'll also horizontally and vertically center that in the container. No, that's not the good one I wanted. I wanted this one, horizontally and vertically. We'll add those constraints there. Um, and finally, what we need to do is hook up the action. So select the button, pull, pull down the control key, uh, click and drag over here. Change that type to from outlet to action. We'll just call this dismiss tapped. And uh, it, sometimes it does this because it, Xcode is buggy, so just hit Command B or build a project. Uh, what that's doing is just telling uh, Xcode that, hey, this uh, class goes with this view controller. Do the same thing again. Hopefully Apple will fix that in the next version because it's kind of frustrating. Always happens. Um, action, uh, dismiss, tapped, and uh, there we go. That works. So. Um, once this button is tapped, once we have a modally presented view controller, uh, we simply need to call dismiss. And uh, when we call dismiss, if you read here, it says um, in the text below, let me bring that back up, dismiss the view controller that was presented modally by the view controller. And so what we'll do here is we'll provide true for the animation. For the completion handler, we're just going to pass in nil because we're not really interested in doing anything after it completes. Um, and now let's run this with that uh, modal segue as the type and see what happens when we hit that button. So segue and dismiss, segue and dismiss. So that's how we get out of that trap. Now we can also change uh, how it animates or how it presents itself modally. So if we go back and select the segue here and we go over to the segue in the attribute inspector, if we look here, we see that we still have the present modally selected, but we have a we have a few different options here. We have a transition, uh, such as cover vertical, uh, flip horizontal, partial curl. So let's play with these. Let's do the um, cross dissolve. That one's kind of an interesting animation. So let's run that now and compare that with uh, the default one that we had. So segue, and you see kind of how it fades in and out. So it's a totally different uh, modal animation than what we had before. Uh, let's try a different one. Let's go back, and select our segue, and uh, from cross dissolve, let's try uh, flip horizontal. And uh, we'll run that one and see what it looks like. So hit our segue button and see how it kind of flips over like that, back and forth. So uh, a few different options for you to play around with and see what you like for uh, you know, different kind of animation styles. But now um, let's also see how we can do this in the code because everything we can do in a storyboard, we can also do programmatically. So let's do that right now. Taking a programmatic approach, we need to actually kill that segue connection in the storyboard. Uh, so we can do that just by selecting it from here and then deleting it. And we want to go back over to the uh, first view controller we had, which is just viewcontroller.swift. And the button that we had here, well, we created a direct connection from this view controller to the next one. Um, but for a programmatic approach, that's not going to work. So we'll need to create the IV action here. Um, in the actual code file, just like we did for the dismiss button. So we'll just take uh, that button and we'll, from outlet, we'll turn it to action. Um, and you'll just, like I did, control click drag over here to create the connection. And we'll just call this um, segue tapped. But in order to segue from uh, our view controller to this destination view controller, uh, we have to be able to find it. We have to know uh, how to load it and then segue to it. And even though I said we weren't going to use this storyboard ID, since I decided to do this programmatically, we actually do need it. So it's a good thing that we added it. Um, so what we'll do is go back to segue tapped in our viewcontroller.swift. And the first thing we need to do is get a reference to the storyboard. Um, there's a property on UI view controller called uh, self.storyboard. And if you look at it, it's the storyboard from which the view controller originated. Now, since we're inside of viewcontroller.swift, well, where does it originate from? It originates from the main storyboard. 
So we should be able to find it there because we're inside of it technically. Uh, we could also do it a different way. We could do uh, let main storyboard equal UI storyboard for a name and a bundle. In this case, we would provide the name main because if we look here, we have main dot storyboard. We don't use the dot storyboard. That's just the file extension. We use the main or whatever the name of the storyboard might be. It could be uh, a totally different name depending on if you're using multiple storyboards. And for the bundle, um, we can just put bundle dot main. Uh, we could use nil uh, if we want to, but the main bundle is where all of these resources, such as the storyboards, the assets, are located inside of the app uh, bundle. So it's always good to provide the main, the main bundle inside of an app context. So that's fine. Um, so we can we can do this approach, or we can do self dot storyboard, uh, whatever whatever one is easier. But they're both going to yield the same result. Um, so what we'll do here is since main storyboard uh, is our type here. We then want to do, and let me let me make sure, let me double check something here. Okay. So we need to get our detail view controller. So what I'm going to do here is close the assistant editor, and we'll do a um, guard let uh, destination or destination view controller. I mean destination view controller equal main. Storyboard dot instantiate view controller with identifier as destination view controller. Else, if we can't find it, we'll return and we'll just print out couldn't find the view controller. And uh, let's just do a command B to build, make sure everything is, um, is working fine here. Okay, so far so good. And uh, if we want to do a, um, a push, we'll just do this. Navigation controller dot push view controller destination view controller animated set to true. And let's run this right now and see what it looks like in the simulator. And uh, I want to actually use my variable, not the uh, class, because they have the same name. OK, there we go. And look at that. It's exactly the same kind of animation as what we did in the storyboard. Um, if we call dismiss, you'll see that it's not doing anything, because we didn't modally present anything. We pushed destination view controller onto the navigation controller stack. We pop it off the stack when we dismiss. We push it back on again when we segue in and pop it. So back and forth, back and forth. Now, uh, you might be asking, OK, well, where did that navigation controller property come from? I didn't quite understand that. And that's understandable. If we do jump to definition, you'll see that we have an extension on UI view controller. And we have an optional navigation controller. And it says, if this view controller has been pushed onto a navigation controller, return it. And the reason we have it is because if you look in the storyboard, we have a navigation controller. It's right here. Our view controller is embedded inside of it. So that means that navigation controller property will not be nil and it will have a value. And then we can use it to do that programmatic push that we just did. So now let's go ahead and do the modal representation of that programmatically. The modal programmatic approach is pretty simple. Um, it's really just a one line of code change. What we're going to do here is just comment out this one. And uh, instead, we're going to do present. And present view controller. Uh, and that's going to be the destination view controller, uh, the property, not the class. Um, animated set to true. And then completion set to nil. And let's run that in the simulator and take a quick look at what it looks like. So we segue. Now you notice navigation bar is gone. Navigation bar is gone because we are not um, pushing onto a navigation controller stack. We are modally presenting this view controller, um, which is completely independent of the navigation stack hierarchy. And now we can dismiss. We can present, dismiss exactly the same way that we did in, in the storyboard way. Now we can do it programmatically, and you'll see the results are exactly the same. Um, but what if we wanted to add those different animation flares that we had? 
Um, if we go destination view controller dot transition, see modal transition style equals dot cover vertical, cross dissolve, flip horizontal, partial curl. We already saw this one. Let's 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 set the cross dissolve and run that and see what it looks like. And um, we already showed this in the storyboard, but just so you can see how to set it programmatically, um, you can get the same results here. So let's run that. And there you go, cross dissolve, cross dissolve back, there, and back again. Um, so we've seen cross dissolve, we've seen um, flip horizontal. Let's do partial curl. We haven't looked at that one yet. So we'll, we just changed that transition style to partial curl. And let's run that in the simulator. And it's kind of like a, like, a, like a little notepad being flipped up. Uh, so it might be useful for some kind of apps that need something like that. But again, there's different options. So just knowing how to set them and what they look like is always important, um, always important to understand. And that wraps up this tutorial. If you found this tutorial helpful, go ahead and let me know. Smash that like button and consider subscribing to CodePro to stay up to date for all the latest tutorials and make sure you hit that bell icon to be notified when the next tutorial goes live. Make sure you follow CodePro on social media and let me know in the comments section down below what tutorial you guys would like to see next. Thank you so much for stopping by and I'll catch you in the next one.